Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 36 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about drilling down and displaying hierarchical data in Grid View without using any data source controls. In part 34, we discussed about doing exactly the same thing using SQL data source control. And in part 35, we discussed about using object data source control. Please watch part 34 and 35 before proceeding with this video. Now, to display continents, countries, and cities data, we need three grid view controls. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's drag and drop three grid view controls onto this web form. So one, two, and three. Now let's set the scheme for these three grid view controls to brown sugar. Let's do that for the second grid view control. And finally, for the third one. All right. Now, if you look at the cities, I mean the continents grid view control, it has got three columns within that. Now, I'm going to use two template columns and one bound column for this grid view control. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Click on Edit Columns. And then we want two template fields. So one template field, second template field, and then one bound field. OK, now since we are specifying what fields we want within the grid view control, you know, we don't want the fields to be auto-generated. So I'm going to uncheck this, auto-generate fields. OK, now the first template field doesn't have any header text, but the second one has got continent ID as the header text. So I'm going to go to the template field and set that to continent ID. And the third field has the header text as continent name, and that's the bound field. So let's set the header text to continent name. And we want this bound field you know, to bind to continent uh, name property of the continent object that comes out of continent data access layer. Now, we discussed about building these data access layer classes in the previous session. So please watch part 35. Uh, you know, if you want to know about those data access layer fly, uh, you know, classes. All right, so we want to bind to continent name property. Okay, so this bound field. Let's click OK. Now at this point, if you look at this, we have, you know, two template fields here for which we'll have to specify the templates. So click on Edit Templates. Now obviously, look at this. Uh, the first column should display a link button on which the user can click to select a row. So we need link button, you know, in the first template field. So if you look at this, now we are specifying the item template for the first template field. And we want a link button there. So let me drag and drop a link button. And we want the text on that link button to be select. So I'm going to change that. So go to the properties of that link button and change the text to select. And another thing, important thing that we need to set here is the command name. So I'm going to set this command name. Look at this. When I click this link button, we want to select the countries. So I'm going to set you know, the command name to select countries for that um, link button. OK, later we'll see how we will actually use that property. So for now, let's set this, this to select countries. OK, now in the, in the second template field, we need a label control which can display the continent ID. So let's go ahead and select the second template field, which is continent ID. And I want to change the item template. So select item template, and we want a label there. OK, so let's edit data bindings for this label. And we want to set the text property to, basically, we want to bind you know, this label to continent ID property of the continent object. So that's what I'm going to do here. So text property of this label should bind to continent ID property. That's it. Click OK. Now we can and template editing. So we are done configuring the grid view control. OK, so now when the web form loads, OK, if it is not, you know, a post back, meaning if it is the initial get request, what we want to do, we want to display the continents grid view, you know. So to retrieve the data for continents grid view, we have continent data access layer. So let's call that. So grid view one dot data source is equal to continent 
data access layer and it has got a method get all continents which is going to return a list of continent objects which is going to act as the data source for our grid view one control so finally call grid view one dot data bind okay that's it at this point if we run the application as you might expect when the web form initially loads it should show all the grid view I mean all the continents within the first grid view control all right so now let's actually configure the second grid view control now if you look at the second grid view control we need four columns there you know the first two columns I'm going to convert them to template fields and the second two columns will be bound fields so let's go ahead and add you know two template fields and two bound fields for this grid view control and to do that click on the grid view tasks pane click on edit columns and again we don't want the fields to be auto generated so I'm going to uncheck this checkbox add two template fields and two bound fields and obviously in the first template field just like you know continents grid view control we need a link button and we don't have a header text there okay so we'll edit the templates in just a bit and then the second column in the second grid view control should display a header text of country ID so I'm going to set the header text here to country ID and the third column within the grid view control should by you know have a header text of country name and the fourth one continent ID so let's set the header text to country name and since this is a bound field we want to bind this to country name property okay and then finally continent ID and this should bind to continent ID property of the country object so let's specify that as the data field okay so we are done let's click OK now we need to edit templates because you know the first one should have a link button and the second template field should have a label to display the country ID so let's flip to Visual Studio let's edit templates so obviously the first one should be a link button so this is the first template field so let's drag and drop a link button and look at this when I select a row within the second grid view control we want to select all the cities belonging to that so let's specify a command name for this link button so right click on the link button go to the properties and let's specify the command name and I'm going to call this select cities okay and again we want the text on that link button to be select so let's change the text property as well okay and then we need to edit the temp item template for you know country ID column so let's drag and drop a label control there and we want to edit data bindings we want you know the label control within the item template of the second template field to be binding to country ID property of the country object so to do that so we are binding the text property to country ID property that's it click OK let's end template editing so we are done configuring the second grid view control now for the third grid view control we don't have to do any configuration because uh, we don't want you know select buttons or anything in that we just want the fields to be auto generated and we display them in the third grid view control okay so at this point now obviously whenever you know look at this as we run this right now and when I click uh, you know the select button in the first grid view control nothing is going to happen because we haven't told the grid view control what to do when we click on that row so obviously to do that we need to generate the event handlers so let's go to the properties of grid view one control click on the event ha uh, icon now whenever we select a row you know obviously an event is raised row command event is raised okay so I'm going to generate an event handler for that so here I have the event let's double click that so row command event you know is generated for grid view 1 let's do the same thing for grid view 2 so row command alright so what should happen when we select a row within the first grid view control okay when I select a continent we need to invoke these countries data access layer and retrieve all the countries belonging to that continent obviously we will do that within grid view one underscore row command event handler 
Okay, and to speed things up, I have already typed this, so let me copy that and paste it here. So now if you look at this code, it's pretty straightforward. What are we doing? So when I select this row, remember we have set the command name property of the link button to select the countries. So in web form one for grid view one control, the link button that we have in the template field, look at the command name property. We have set it to select countries. And here we are checking if e dot command name is equal to select countries, then what we need to do, okay, on whatever row we have clicked, we need to find out the continent ID, take that continent ID and then pass it to countries data access layer to retrieve countries belonging to that continent and then bind that list to the second grid view control, which is what we are exactly doing here. So we are finding, you know, the row index upon which the user has clicked the select link button. Okay, and to do that, we are using the you know this grid view command event arguments object. So e dot command source. What is e dot command source going to be? The link button. Where did the user click on the link button? So e dot command source will return us a link button. And then obviously look at this command source is returning it as an object, but we know it's a link button, so we are typecasting it to the link button. And then on that, we're using this naming container property, which is going to return the grid view row. And then out of, because the link button here is present in this grid view row of that grid view control. Okay. And we want the row index of that row in which the user has clicked the select button. And to do that, we are actually using the row index property, which is straightforward. Okay. So this line is basically to retrieve, you know, the row index in which the user has clicked the select button. And once we have the row index, things are pretty easy. Okay, in that row in which the user has clicked the select button, we need to retrieve the continent ID. And to do that, I am simply saying grid view one dot rows, and then I'm using that row index within the rows collection, use the row index to find out which row he has clicked. And within that row, find a control with label continent ID. Look at this. This is the reason. Look at that. I'm using a find control method to find the label which has got an ID of label continent ID. And if you remember, within the first grid view control, this continent ID column is a template field. And we have specified, you know, a label here. And it has got an ID. It's label 1. Okay. So let's actually use label 1 instead of LBL continent ID. So I'm going to put that label one there. So from that label one, retrieve the continent, you know, basically here we are retrieving that label and then we are using the text property of that label control. Okay. And then converting that to integer and then retrieving the continent ID. So these three lines here are basically used to retrieve the continent ID of the row on which the user has clicked the select button. And once we have that, it's pretty straightforward, you know, invoke the countries data access layer. It has got a method called get countries by continent and we are passing that continent ID. Okay, and then whatever is returned, we are binding that to grid view to control and calling, you know, data bind finally. Okay, pretty simple and straightforward. Now, if I run this at this time, when I select a row within the first grid view control, we should have, uh, you know, the countries populated, which makes sense. Okay, now we need to do the same thing for the third grid view control. And again, the code is going to be pretty much straightforward. So let me copy this and paste that here. So again, it's, it's, it's the same piece of code, but it's a different grid view control. When I select a row in the country's grid view control, all we need to do is retrieve the country ID and then pass it to city's data access layer. Okay, and that's what we are exactly doing here. So if e dot command name is equal to select cities, you know the first line is retrieving the row index, and the second line is retrieving the control which displays the country ID. Now if you remember in the second grid view control, okay, within the second template field, the label ID is label two. So let's use that ID. So we are finding that label control, and then we are using the text property of the la label control to retrieve the text, which is going to be the country ID. Since text is a string property, I mean string type, we need to convert that to integer. So we have the country ID. We pass that to 
get cities by country ID method, retrieve all the cities, and then bind that to third grid view control. Pretty simple. Let me run this now. So everything should be functional as we expect it to be. You know, all the three grid view controls should work. So I select a continent, all the countries are displayed. I select a country, and look at this. In India, the cities are displayed. But there is a slight problem here. The first problem is, look at this, the row is not selected, meaning it doesn't show me any visual indication of which row is selected in the grid view control. But look at the slide here. When I click the select button, the row gets, you know, the selected row gets a different color. So how do I make that row get that color? It's pretty simple. All you need to do is, so in grid view one, when I select a row, I know the row index upon which the user has clicked the select button. To achieve that, all you need to do is in grid view one dot select row, you know, call this method and pass it the row index on which the user has clicked, you know, the select button. And we know we want to select that row. So let me pass that row index there. And now, and let's do the same thing for the second grid view control as well. So whenever somebody clicks the select button on the second grid view control, we want a row you know, on which they have clicked to be selected by default. OK, so grid view 2 dot selected row. So now that problem should have gone. So I select Europe. Look at that. It gets selected. I select France. You know, France is selected. So I have a visual indication now. OK, so Paris, etc. But there is another slight problem here. Look at this. At the moment, in the continents, I have Europe selected. And in countries, I have France selected. OK, and obviously, cities uh, are the cities in the France country. Now, let me change the continent to Asia. OK, so I selected Asia continent. The country's grid view is displaying it correctly, India, Japan, and Malaysia. But look at this. In the countries, Japan is selected. But look at what is being displayed in uh, um, cities. It's Paris. You know, all the cities that are present in France, because France was previously selected, this grid view control, the third grid view control, didn't refresh itself when I have changed the continent. OK, so how do we solve this problem? Again, it's pretty straightforward to do that. Let me actually copy this code and paste it here. So when the selection in the continent changes, you know, what should we do? When the selection in the continent changes, I'm checking, OK, is there any row selected in grid view 2 at all? If it is selected, you know, look at this, if grid view 2 dot selected value, if that is not equal to null, then what we want to do, basically, we want to retrieve that selected value from the grid view control, in this case, Japan. And then obviously, selected value is going to return that as an object. So we need to convert that to integer. So convert that to integer and pass it to this method, get cities by country ID, um, which is going to return all the cities belonging to that country. And what we want to do with them, we want to bind them to the grid view 3 control. So basically, what we are doing is, when I select a continent here, I'm refreshing this grid, you know, the city's grid view control, if at all, if there is any country selected within the country's grid view control. That's our second grid view control. OK, so now let's go ahead and run this. OK, we are going to have a slight problem here. We'll fix that. So I selected this one. Look at this. Data keys must be specified on grid view 2 before selected keys can be retrieved. Since I'm using selected keys property here, OK, selected value property, we need to specify the data key names property. OK, so what is the data key name going to be? It's going to be, you know, for the first grid view control, it's going to be continent ID because that's the primary key in TBL uh, continents table. And for the second grid view control, it's going to be country ID. So, I mean, it's enough if we specify it just for the second grid view control at this time. So data key names is equal to, it's going to be country ID. All right, let's run this now. So I have Europe selected. I have France selected. Now let's, let me change the continent. Look at that. France is selected. All the cities in France are displayed. Now I'm refreshing this to Asia. Look at this. Japan is selected. But I have the cities now within Japan. OK. 
On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.